Hello everybody, Scott Golden here with Golden Opportunities Coaching. Welcome to those of you who are new. Welcome back to those of you who are seasoned veterans of what we do around here with almost 500 of you. We'd love to get to 500 in this month. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Please like, comment below, and all that good stuff. Today we're going to talk about people that drain us or situations that drain us and how to know if you're in a relationship that's draining you emotionally, mentally, spiritually. So the ne the, there's about uh, half a dozen or maybe a few more things to talk about with that. And the first thing is, if you hate talking to a person, if the idea of talking to another person gives you feelings of just dread, that you know the conversation is going to go in a direction that's going to make you feel tired, going to make you feel feel worn out, going to make you feel like you're not making any progress, make you kind of feel like you're sliding in, in uh, quicksand, make you feel like you can never get ahead or, or like you've wasted your time. If you hate talking to a person, then chances are they're draining your energy at some level. I remember having a very close friend, someone in my inner circle for a whole bunch of years, and they went through a couple of things, and I was there for them uh, several times a week for a couple of years, a very long-term emotional commitment. And I finally got to the point where I started to avoid contacting with them because I knew we were going to have the same conversation over and over and over again. And it didn't, at the time, you know, this is more than probably closer to, to maybe a dozen, 15 years ago. At the time, I didn't know how to say to someone that had been in my inner circle for, you know, six, seven, eight years, hey, this isn't, this relationship's become really one-sided. Luckily, now I, I much better know um, how to handle that. But at the time, I had no idea. And when I knew I hated talking to them, and it, it stressed me out. And I'm going to combine two things here. Physical stress and emotional stress are often combined with each other. So if you have heart palpitations, if you begin to sweat, if your throat begins to close up, if you have difficulty breathing, if, you, if you're just you're, you're shallow, you begin to physically shake, your, your eyes dart around, but basically your body starts to give you signs that you don't want to do this, you don't want to deal with this. Or you have mental and emotional stress. Why do I have to deal with this? How am I going to deal with this? And you're trying to find ways to keep the conversation as quick, direct, and, and efficient as possible without saying too much. You're trying to keep your answers short and tight. They're draining you because what you're really trying to do is get in, look like you care, or look like you're still invested, and then, and then ultimately um, kind of get away from the conversation as quick as possible. And when you have a, a draining or burnout type situation, that, you know, we've all had a bad day. We've all had days where... Um, certainly we're, we're burned out from other outside stimulus, but when it's a person and you know that every time you interact with the person you feel the same way, um, there, there certainly is a, a reason to, to get, get away from that situation. If you t tend to ignore their uh, uh, efforts to reach out, be it emails or, or letters or phone calls or whatever because you know – that there's nothing you're going to do or say in a conversation or series of conversations or, or chain of conversations, if it's an email, where you're going to feel like you resolved anything. So you ignore them and maybe your body begins to react and you see, you know, hear that they've text messaged you or, or see that you've, you know, had your issues or, or whatever. Or when you open an email and you're just like, okay, I want to delete you now and then you run for the delete button. That's that's another way. And if you avoid places that you would normally go or, or social circles where you would normally hang out because you're trying to avoid the person, that's another sign that they're draining your energy and you expect that behavior to continue. Um, you know, you know, after dealing with a person, you need to de-stress. De Maybe that's going to the batting cage and hit a few and hit a few baseballs around. Maybe that's uh, meditation or prayer for you. Maybe that's listen to rock music about you know ripping someone's throat out, or or the other way, finding a, a way to find serenity. Maybe it inspires radical emotion or or extreme emotion. Anytime you have a person or situation with a person that constantly brings you to emotional upheaval where you don't really feel in control of your emotions anymore, this is a sign that the person is draining you. The next is the temptation or the need or the connective or the desire to vent about that person on a continual basis. So you may seek out other friends to be like, hey, you're not going to believe what, you know, what Peter said. You're not going to believe 
what what uh, what Dana did. You're not going to understand. Like I need just just to get this off my chest. And when you're looking almost for a confessional or a venting session after dealing with a person, it's usually a sign that that relationship is no longer healthy. It's no longer beneficial. It's no longer serving the highest good for either party because if you're expecting to need to decompress after dealing with somebody that means you're not fully engaging with them active listening active speaking when dealing with them anyway and that drain will eventually become self-evident so until next time keep your feet on the ground your mind in the moment until next time everybody